Hello. Uh, today we would like to welcome to the podcast award-winning designer and blogger Christine Perry, better known as perhaps Winnick Mum. Hello, Christine. Hello. Hello. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> During the podcast today, um, we've also got a fantastic giveaway. So if you would like to get your knitty mitts on some yarn, yarn and patterns, stick around to find out how. Um, so, Christine, looking for the extraordinary in every day and knitting socks too. I'm intrigued. Where does that name come from, Winnick Mum? Well, Winnick Mum originally came from um, a church newsletter because that's that's where it started. They were looking for somebody to fill the space between the, I think it was the hairdresser's advert and the neighbourhood watch announcement. And then my husband's going, you know, he's, he's doing a bit of a, of a nudge, going, oh, you, you could do that. And I thought... I could do that. So so I so I started writing this. It was only a short article. They didn't want more than 500 words. And I just started writing it about life as a mom in the village and, and trying to, to look for the extraordinary in the, in the everyday. So it, it was trying to pick out something and then relate it to our, our life or what my girls were doing or, um, you know, sort of like life as a family. And that's what that's where it came from. But so I, I became Winnick Mom because I was super self-conscious about, about doing it in the first place and I didn't want somebody in the local shop to be tapping me on the shoulder going that thing that you wrote in this book I thought oh, I'll just I'll just stay a bit a bit quiet and I never you know I never said anything terrible I never wrote it oh when our neighbors said this I never did any of that kind of thing I was just I was just a bit shy so so it just became when it mom and and I I liked the name I did I did it for a long time up until the, the, the newsletter stopped being published and after a couple of years of doing that then I thought I'm going to put this on a blog, and um, and at first, if you go back and look through my my archives, you can only see the, the the monthly musings they were called. And so, for the first year, maybe year and a half, that's all there is. I didn't I didn't do anything else. And then uh, gradually, I started to think, oh, maybe I'm brave enough to start putting a post on there, and or you know, just write about being out with the dog, or or, or you know, some something something like that. And then. It didn't take long because I was a sock knitter even at that point. It didn't take long before the socks made it onto the blog. And then Winnick Mum became more about the socks than than about the, the other bit. And now it just all it all it all blends together. So I still do a monthly musing every month, uh, which is the legacy from the from the church newsletter. And that's something that's caught my attention. That's my that's particularly my looking for the extraordinary in the everyday. But but, it, but also that's, that, um, that tagline reminds me, even when I'm writing my usual blog post, to just slow down. You know, let's not let's not march at 90 miles an hour on this dog walk up through the up through the woods. Let's go a little bit slower and notice what's happening. You know, notice the seasons and and you know, notice what what's under my feet. Or if I, if I'm out in a the city, then look up because we never do, do we? And the buildings are beautiful, and we never stop and look for them. So that's what that's where where that came from. So so. The and knitting socks too is is because after a while I thought I need to add that in because because that's what I do so so winning mum is a conglomeration of all of those things and it just love it I love it it is such a beautiful collection of articles and blog posts um, and Thank that you. reminder that gentle reminder just to slow down and take it in because everything passes you by so quickly you're rushing to the next deadline to finish the next project it, you're up to move on to the right. next thing and and you blink and you miss so much I'm certainly finding that now that I've gotten older it's like where mm. where does the time go it, it, yeah, it, it, it definitely goes faster as we as we're getting older doesn't it and I and I don't like it um and um, I you know, I, 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 I write a lot on the blog about time and taking time and slowing it down and 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 I I try really hard I'm not perfect at it by any means I try really hard to follow follow my own advice you know rather than you know do what I do and not what I say do what I say and not what I do whichever way around it is um you know I try really hard not to just make that announcement and then Bog off and you know do something completely different. You know, I try I try to live my words as much as I can, but it's it's not easy. It's not easy being slow in in what is such a busy world. We, we are such a busy world now, and then you know. But that's why we're things, expected that's where to do like, so much. 
Yeah, but that's where knitting helps us, isn't it? And you know, you'll know this because the, because the stitches put you into a flow and you're not doing anything else when you're doing that and your mind calms and it's so good for you. So that's, I think everybody should knit. It should be on prescription, but a free prescription. <laughs> I totally agree with you. I mean, I find myself, if I pick my needles up about three o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm often rushing through a project, but I find myself around that time of day just gently nodding with the stitches. Yeah. And I'll just close my yeah. eyes and, and do a couple more stitches. So it does, it, it does bring about an inner quiet that I very much appreciate. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, we are, we are so lucky to have this in our lives and as, and as, as part of what, what we do you know, what we, what we do, for, what we do for a living. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's a proper blessing. I think. I saw a, um, a lovely interview or chat between you and Lynn Rowe. I think it was on the, um, Black Sheep Walls. Oh podcast. gosh, that was, or, yeah, that was, were, that would be a while ago. about mindfulness in, in, in stitching. Um, so I will find a link and I will pop that in, um, for anyone that just needs that kind of gentle reminder yes, yeah Lynn is Lynn is very good at the mindfulness and and, and the knitting and, and that kind of thing and because and, and Lynn, Lynn and I can can chat endlessly anyway so so I think I think in the end we just forgot the camera was there and we were we were just talking about that because once you once you find a common thread with somebody then then you know you, you, you just keep going don't you and I think that as, as knitters or crocheters or you know, crafters of any of any sort if, when we find somebody else who does the same thing then it bypasses all of that awkwardness of, of meeting someone for the first time because it's like oh what are you making oh what needles do you use oh I like that yarn and and instantly you've got that bond and and, and you and you can you can just chat can't you and I think we all recognize how how good having yarn in our hands is for us I certainly find that also helps break down some some barriers. So you're you're sat with someone having a conversation and you're both crafting. You're not perhaps overthinking what you're going to say next or yes. what did they mean by that. I think it does really help take away some of the, the anxiety, I guess, you know, yeah, when, absolutely. when chatting because- with someone. And when you think that when we go to 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 knit and natters or or even if we're just crafting with a friend, the chances are that we're not sitting facing them, we're sitting to the side of them, and there is evidence that our conversations can can um, uh, encompass much more um, pertinent and personal things that that we that we need to to do and talk about when you're not looking at the person. So it might be that you know that someone's not very happy, but they're sitting and knitting, and they won't tell you if you say, "Let's go for a coffee," and you sit opposite tea in my case but but you're sitting opposite them you know they're, they're just gonna go yeah i'm fine but when you're sitting and you're crafting and you're doing something together the chances are that, if, that in that situation because you're not actually looking at them then they're going to say something that, that's going to en- enable them to either help themselves in some way just by getting it out there or, or let you help them and i think particularly with men it's a known thing that, that men won't talk to each other if they're they're face to face but they will do if they're side by side and um i I think i think um being able to use crafts for this is 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 amazing it's something that that should be utilized more i think i totally agree i do i mean i've made some lifelong friends through knitting knitting and stitching groups it's Mm. yeah it it is a wonderful thing um so yeah thinking about your 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 blog and your work and and everything that you put out into the world there is just so much and by that I mean the breadth of if you, if you go on to <laughs> you your just blog, can't stop <laughs> <laughs> not quite what I was thinking but I mean you've got the, the the sock alongs that run the free patterns the tutorials I mean it is literally a one-stop shop for knitters if you want to know anything head straight on over to your blog I mean, that is, I don't know, is that the right thing is to say? That's quite the legacy of work. Is, is that what I'm trying to say? I mean, that is... I I am very flattered by that. Thank you. Because I think that as it's gone on, then yes, I'd agree with you. That's that's what it is. And um, my, I joke that I'm taking over the world one sock at a time, but, but I'm not doing it on my own anymore. I'm, I'm enabling 
lots and lots of other people to, to do that with me. And I, and I absolutely love it when somebody comes to me and they say, my grandma used to knit socks and I really wish that I'd been able to knit them with her, but now I can do it and I know that she'd be really proud of me. Or they'll say, I've always wanted to be the person to do this with my family or I've always wanted to be. And, and so to, to, to know that, that, that's, that, that's what spurs me on, really. And to know that um, what I am putting out there is, is stuff that people can take away and they can use and that will make them. Um, and you, you'll know this from, from your patterns is that, is that when somebody can create something with, with their hands, then it's not the, whatever the finished project is, is not the sum total of what they've created because they have um, increased their skills. They might have learned something new. Um, I talk about being fluent in another language and, you know, re reading a knitting pattern or a crochet pattern. It's, you know, you know someone who doesn't knit or, or you know, I've said crochet enough now. Someone who doesn't knit because I am a knitter. <laughs> I've done my token crochet bit now. <laughs> Hello, crocheters. <laughs> <laughs> then um you know somebody who who doesn't who doesn't do that if you were to say to them so here's a pattern you tell me what that says and, and they couldn't they couldn't do it because we are fluent in, in that language now and that's something that i think people should be super proud of uh that the confidence that it builds because look what i've made look what i'm wearing what i've made you know the the, the end product is so much more than just the stitches and i think that's amazing i love it I love it. So how soon into your blogging journey did you start to publish sock patterns then? How um, did that begin? It was actually a few a few years in because I started writing uh, Winning Mom. I started with the monthly musings in 2010. And then I've just been back and had a look through the blog. And the first pattern that I put out was in 2014. Um, and before that, I will have been uh, knitting plain socks and, and um and the pattern that I have now is my basic four play socks pattern. That's that's the one that I adapted and changed and made made, made work for me over those years. And then and then that's the one that I share with other people now. Um, I had a I had a bit of a go at designing a few things because I because because you think well I've got this shape. So in theory, all I need to do is it, and. and, and and then you realise that actually it's not quite as easy as you think. You know, it's it's a, it, people who are like, "Hey, anybody can dye yarn," and then all of a sudden they're faced with a vat full of colour, and it's like, mm, not that easy. So, so <laughs> it it took a it took a while for me to to work out out the process. And there have been some some versions of my patterns that have never seen the light of day. I, I used to wear them, but I, I never did anything else with them. But then the very first one that I brought out and put on the blog was one called Watercress Leaves. And that's a very basically written one. So somebody has to know how to knit a pair of socks really before they can they can go back and, and, and look at that one. Um because at the time I wasn't I wasn't particularly thinking about it, about anybody except myself really and what I was knitting and what I was doing. It was only later on that I started to think that I, I wanted to do something that was more more um more specific for beginners. I, I like to help beginners. So so all of my patterns are so the basic four ply socks pattern. That's if some even if you've never knitted anything at all before, as long as you can knit pearl cast on, I'll show you the rest. You can knit those socks. And then I do next step patterns now, but it's all based on that same one. So if you can knit that sock, you can knit the rest of mine. And so that's how that's how they've evolved from there. Um and the basic four ply socks pattern came out in 2015. So I think once I'd dipped my toes in the water and thought, oh, look at this, I've done it now. That that, that was it. The, the world's never going to be rid of me now. I'm just always there with my sock patterns now. <laughs> How long have you actually been knitting socks for then? When did you start? For, well, for, 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 well, my very first pair of socks I made when I was in my late teens. And that was only because my lovely, lovely Uncle Harry in Scotland, his, his wife, my, my Aunt Ella, had died and she always used to knit his socks for him. And then when she died, he was he was totally bereft because not only had he had he lost his wife of you know like so many years they'd been together for such a long time, but they had nobody to, to knit socks for him. So so I got I got the oh. message. Oh, you can knit, so you can now knit. I was like, oh, I'm blinking at you know something. Like, 
This could have been like late 1980s. Nobody knitted socks in the 1980s, did we? We all had big hair and shoulder pads and, you know, mohair. We didn't we didn't knit socks. So so I remember going to a yarn shop with my mum and, and, and you know, the lady in the yarn shop was a bit like, socks, you've got to be kidding. And we eventually found one pattern and, and, uh, and, and my mum's gone, oh, I'm sure I've got some double pointed needles somewhere. And we found a ball of yarn that was, I think we got, I think the choice was black blue or some indeterminate green colour and I was like, Oh, we like fishing, we'll have that colour. And, and that was that was it. That was the only choice. So I took I, you know, I will have gone home and I've gone, well, you know, no, no, nobody ever told me that I couldn't knit anything. And that that's what I try and pass on to people now. If you want to do it, just do it. You know, and because um you know, when nobody tells you that you can't do it, then you're, you're absolutely fearless and you just launch yourself straight at it. So I knitted this pair of socks that was, there was, there was sewing up in the gussets. There was, there was like, oh, my life. It was, you know, I, I eventually got them off the needles. There was much wrestling of the hedgehog going on. It was, it was all a bit of a disaster. But again, yeah, got this pair of socks and I, I sent them up to him and I, and I got a thank you very much note and I never heard anything ever again. So clearly he'd either found somebody else to, to knit his socks for him or, and we just thought, yeah, that one pair will do me now. And um, and then that was it. I said, never, ever again. Never, ever am I going to knit socks. Nobody. And nobody ever is going to put me anywhere near four-ply yarn. And, and, you know, somewhere in the distance, the universe laughed and went, well, I'll be good for a few years. Because <laughs> all I knit now is socks in four-ply. <laughs> so, so, you know, I'm getting, you know, eventually I'll get, I'll get up there to my cloud and someone will be like, well, told you, told you that's what you were doing. Which maybe just started a little bit early. So so I put it away for, you know, I just, I just like shelved it as though, you know, never again. Um, and it wasn't until my youngest daughter was about, I don't know, maybe one and a half or two, and she's learning to drive now. So I've been I've been knitting for probably 15, 16, 16 years. Um, just, just socks, pretty much just socks, because I never get bored of them. There have been a few things in between, but I just love socks. And if that makes me super boring, I don't care, because I just love socks. And then... <laughs> just just how it is we find we find our thing if we're lucky don't we and and that's my thing yeah we do and i was having um, a a quick look on ravelry to see how many designs you had out there um and i found 78 now i'm guessing if you're anything like me there's an awful lot of designs that haven't made their way on to said ravelry that's a lot of sock designs have you got any idea roughly how many sock designs (laughs) you have uh, worked on i haven't if if i'd been super organized i would have counted them all before i came to talk to you but <laughs> but um but no i didn't i didn't do that but no you i think there there is there is more than than 78 i don't know if there's quite as many as 100 but it won't be far off there because the ones that are on ravelry don't include um all the what all the ones that went into went into some of the West Yorkshire spinners books, for example, because not all because some of the ones that are listed there they they've put on there, but they didn't uh, they didn't separate them out of the books. Um, there's a few that have gone that have been published in magazines that I I need to put out as patterns and I haven't got around to it yet, so they're they're all sitting in drawers as well. So so there are there are more, but it's seventy even seventy eight. Seventy eight's loads, isn't it? I, I don't ever I don't ever stop to count them. I just I just I just just do them and 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 you're probably the same as designers is that when you're working <clears> on one you you get you, you get to the end and you go Ah, oh, right. Okay, I'll have a cup of tea. And oh, what can I cast on next? And then suddenly there's a, there's another <laughs> idea, and, 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 and you don't stop, do you? Or or even while you're part way through, you're thinking, oh, I like that stitch. I could do. Oh, I could do that next time. Oh, I could do one of those. And and um, so it doesn't so stop, or, does it? It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop because once you fire up your creative mind, then it doesn't stop. And that's that's just amazing, isn't it? What an amazing thing that is. What an amazing thing. It is. I mean, and I, and I was having a looking, a looking, a look at the publications that you've been in. I mean, and that's that's quite the list. I mean, the knitting sock bible that was with Lynn Rowe, wasn't it? That was Lynn again. Yes, that's right. Did yeah, Lynn put yeah, that collection yeah, together. Lynn. Yes, Lynn, Lynn, course, Lynn the, is a good uh, friend of mine. She's she's very she's very good. She is lovely. I, I've met Lynn a few yeah. times and we've chatted, and yeah, she's she's good fun to chat with and knows everything and everybody. So if you want to know I, something, I think that, Lynn is sort of like. 
Yes, yes. Lynn is one of these one of these undiscovered treasures. I think is that she's she uh, less so now. I think, but for a long time she was she was she seemed to be quite under the radar. And uh, 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 but but then you think who's designed that? Oh, it was Lynn who wrote that. Oh, it was Lynn, and and and, and she's just she just as you say she just knows everybody and everything. And, and I know that when I talk to her, sometimes she'll say, "Oh, a publisher phoned me, and they just asked me about this," and uh, and I told them about this, and I'm like. Wow, that's amazing! And she's obviously on so many people's go-to lists. And what what a lovely thing! What a lovely thing to to be. I think that's great. So, what have you learned on your journey as a designer? What advice would you give to a new designer? Um, I would say, I'd say I'm, like all of my all of my knitting stuff. I said, just do it, just do it. If you if you are confident enough to with what you're with what you're knitting and what you're working on and if you've got a particular um idea that you think you think would work then just just give it a go you know you don't have to you don't have to create something that you're going to publish in 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 any way and it might be that your first few patterns don't do anything wrong with that it might be that when you um when you read through magazines, uh, and there are uh, sub- submission calls as well as, as well for magazines, aren't there? So, um, so every every now and again, a magazine will will put out that what um, the information that the, the designs that they might be looking for um, for for right the next you know the next six months or whatever. So if you see something on there and you think, oh, I could design something based on that mood board or based on that theme, then that might be what you need to to to, to get yourself going. And give you the impetus to to actually start, and you might you might design something and think, mm, okay, I'll just keep that for myself. Or you might design and go, actually, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to send it to the magazine and see what they say. And you might get knocked back, but, but that but that's fine. You know, we've 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 all been knocked back from from magazines and and, and publications, and and that, and that's all right. You know, we can't all all match the requirements for everything for everybody all the time. And just because somebody says it's not right for this magazine or this book, then that doesn't mean that you're terrible at it. It just means that it didn't fit at that time. And if you've got something in your head and something that you know is something that you can develop, then then just do it. Just 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 keep going. There's always room. There's always room for for more people and more designers. And everybody was a beginner once. You know, none of us came out of the egg being able to knit or 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 design or or any of those things, did we? You know, we've 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 all got you know, we've all got swatches and bags of things that have got a bit wrong and it's a bit fluffy at the end where we've re-knitted them 17 times. And, and and it's all part of the learning, isn't it? Nothing's nothing's ever ever wasted. You just just do it. Just do it, I say. <laughs> to quote an athletics company. Yes, definitely. <laughs> that is exactly what went through my head. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it is the best advice, is you try and you try and you try again. Yes. And... Uh, as you rightfully said, don't take the the nose personally. Can you can you say one of my best selling sock patterns was was declined by magazines. It was declined by about three magazines, yep. and I was like, right, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. And now it's one of my best sellers. So it's like, yeah, and that's no. can't fit everywhere. And, and, <laughs> but but we've we've got the opportunity to do that now, haven't we? So with with um, with Ravelry and, yeah. and Payhip and Etsy and any of the you know any of those selling sites then if you can produce something that you know that somebody might want to buy then you can do it yourself you know we're not limited these days to to having to approach a publisher and say and I've got 17 patterns and I want them in a book you know you don't you don't have to do that anymore um and it, it's it's good that we've got that opportunity and there's always um you know I think we I, I think we just just have to remember that there's always room. There's always room, isn't there, for for somebody for somebody else to to come in and do something. And that that Definitely. and and it's important to remember not to try or try to remember not to feel threatened by by thinking that oh there's thousands of people coming in and and because it you know it doesn't it doesn't work like that. There's always space and there's always room. So so you should never feel that it's that the the, the pond is too full and you can't you can't get in yourself and you shouldn't feel that the pond is too full and there's no room for anybody else to come in. You know, there has, there has to be, you know, there has to be movement and flow, I think. And, and um, yeah, it's, and, and, and just, just keep trying, just keep trying. And I've certainly found the design community to be incredibly supportive and welcoming. Hmm. I think most designers yeah. will yeah. chat to you yeah. and offer you advice and answer your questions. 
it, it, it is a very it's a lovely community to be part of i think we all support it each is, other it and, is. And, and and sometimes it's being brave enough to to ask somebody in the first place isn't it and then that goes back to that being fearless thing isn't it if nobody's ever said to you you can't ask a designer about that then you don't know you just you just ask them don't you and and hopefully they they will you know they'll, they'll respond and in a, in a positive way <laughs> going back to your extensive catalogue of designs um i i do have a favorite of yours and that's the easy mosaic socks i love i love mosaic knitting it just gives you such a lot for relatively little effort as much as i love color work it, socks and working fair isle it's managing the floats and just trying yes. to keep everything even when it comes to mosaic knitting it just flies off my needles it, it's, especially it's one if you of those compare, things that's a bit of magic. It is. And especially if you compare a solid yarn colour with a variegated or a self-striping, then you just get this effect that is is beautiful. You do. I think the easy mosaic socks, um, which we will pop that a link to in the bio. Just there behind me. Ah. <laughs> love, 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 love. <laughs> So when it comes to um, choosing yarns for the projects and the colour palettes, where do you draw your inspiration from? Um, well, the, the the yarns that I designed with West Yorkshire Spinners were um, it was it was sort of one of those conversations where because I'd known them for such a long time and we were talking about yarns and and I was saying, oh, do you want yarns? What do you think? And they're like, oh, great idea. So that's kind of where where that that went from. They went, well, you know, well, go and go away and you know show us something. So so the first the first collection was uh, was based on on what I write the blog about. So. Um, uh, there was Pim Gem, which was an amethyst tumble stone that I carry about in my pocket. Seascape, which is childhood holidays to Wales, where sometimes the sea was that blue colour. It's not, it's not <laughs> always. It doesn't always. It doesn't always rain in Wales. Whatever it says on the postcards. Um, and then I had uh, Wildflower, and that's out, out walking with the dog. And, and what I can what I can see as the you know as, as the seasons progress. And and then bright side because that's what I try to think that the the blog is about. It's looking, it's it's looking for the positive. And you know, I know that I know that there are terrible, terrible things that go on in the world. I am well aware of those. I've got views about politics, views about all kinds of all kinds of things, but I don't feel that they need to be on my blog. What I try and do with the blog is I try and uplift and um, you know, anybody can go and look at a news channel, see the terrible things. They don't need me commenting on that. But if I can, uh, if I can do something that helps them smile, if they're having a bit of a rubbish day, then then that that's you know that's job done for me. Um, so so br bright side is about look, look looking on the bright side, and they were the they were the four that I brought out first, and then we brought out the the second series and that the second collection that's based on the seasons, so the spring summer autumn winter and they they again had um they had stories behind them because everything that I, that I do has a story whether it's a pattern or it's the yarns um so uh, winter icicle was uh, actually based on a, a trip to the ice hotel for my 40th birthday when i realized that the ice and snow isn't actually white it, it's not it's, it's shades of color we were i've wanted to go for so long so so long I, I i love the snow i wanted to see the northern lights it was a, it was a proper special trip and that's what that's what that was and when we came to look at the oh, photos so later jealous. yeah it was it was amazing when we look at the photos then 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 it's they're not they're not white it's not all white the shades of, of colors in there and i thought that was amazing um uh spring was uh, was it was inspired by all of the greens that you see as the as the season moves on, and the pattern was was inspired by um, by the farmer that lived across the road from from where where I grew up, and he was a champion ploughman farmer, and he would spend hours going up and down the fields just making very 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 straight furrows, and you'd see you'd see the um, you'd, you'd see that the uh, the soil turned over where it where it where you know where, where he'd, he'd ploughed it, and then he would. He would you know, turn it round and he'd come back and and he'd be very very straight straight lines because that that's what where he where he won his cups that's how he won his competitions um summer sunset is is that the the the, the colors themselves came from uh, <laughs> they came from a photograph that 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 my youngest daughter took actually we'd gone out for a we'd had a fight <laughs> 
because you have fights with teenage daughters from time to time. And, you do. Uh, <laughs> and, and so and then we, we went out for a walk. It was like, right, that's it. You know, let's stop that. Let's, let's, you know, let's be friends. Let's go out for a walk. And the sun was... It was it was coming. It was sun was on its way down, and the, the colours were just amazing. And and it was it was one of those those it was one of those nights that you know, where you know you don't see them very often. You don't see all those shades of pink and red and and orange. It was just beautiful. So so that's where that's where the photos came from that inspired inspired the colourway, and then the pattern came from from that that moment when. It, just starts to go just a little bit hazy on a summer's evening and you know and the, the paddling pool's been put away and and next door's put his lawnmower away it's been buzzing all afternoon and and you can just hear the hear the, the bees as, as they're doing that you know their last minute thing and it's oh it's just you know, that that was that was where, where where my pattern came from and then and then the last one was was autumn leaves which is this time of year and just the colors the colours, it's again, it's that looking for the extraordinary, you know, stopping, stopping and looking, not just driving past going, ah, oh, leaves are mushy, they're everywhere. I wish somebody had brushed them up. It's just properly looking at the colours. So so that's where, where all of those those came from. Um and there's, you know, I've always got something to say about 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 something you'll have realised as your podcast is 17 hours long because I've always got something to say about something. <laughs> oh, it's been it's been really lovely to hear because I mean the um, summer sunset and the seascape colourways really speak to me. And when you said about the ice hotel, it was like I would so love love to be able to do and go and see all of that. Um, yeah, and then the summer it's, sunset, it's a, it's the, the walk. Amazing. Because it's cooler again in the evenings in the summer. I don't particularly enjoy the heat. Yeah. But the, the sunset is the time of day that I enjoy. And it's like, yeah, that's why I'm drawn to those. It's not necessarily the colour palette itself. It is the mindset that is in, in vogue. Yes. And it all feeds back into this calming, settling state of mind that knitting can bring. Yeah. Yeah, not Thank none you. of us pick up pick up our needles to make us feel worse, do we? That's we all we all do it. We only do it to make it's the occasional feel deadline. Better. I have to be honest. <laughs> well, you've dragged yeah. yourself over to it, and you're thinking mm, it's not love. You're feeling for it at that point. I have to say, or is that just me? No, it's definitely not just you. <laughs> it's what's that? Sorry. <laughs> or is that just me that's not feeling the love as I'm racing towards the deadline? But then, oh well, deadlines are different, aren't they? So when you when you're designing a commission and you've got a deadline, then that's a different sort of knitting to when you're to when your deadline's over and you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to knit that. So so I I I have a very different mindset for for deadline knitting than I do when I'm when I'm just just on my own. And there are times when, as much as I love knitting, and and I would happily do it all day i would tell you that i would knit socks all day but when i've got a deadline then the number of times i'm like oh just need to go and you know and, and the number of things then that i just need to go and do instead and i'm like and it gets worse the closer the deadline gets and you think how is that how is that so i've got a particular place that i that i that i sit and so so when i've got a deadline then it's like i'm gonna sit here and I'm going to because I know that I'm all right and I've got my cup of tea, might have a bit of chocolate, and I'm sitting there and I'm doing it. And that's and and and, and I'm all right then because that's my space where I where I sit for deadlines. Oh, I like that. That that's that's quite yeah. good advice, that is, because I get in that mindset and I'm I would rather dust or iron or any of those <laughs> things I would usually oh, oh. It's, like, it's, it's just knitting. You love to knit. I oh, know, but I think I'm yeah. just going to the dusting instead. Or... I know. I know. Well, I've, I've got to say that's that is the that's pretty much the only time that I will binge watch television because usually when I'm sitting when I'm sitting and knitting in the evening, then that's that, then we've got you know quite often my husband and I are sitting watching something and and, and that, that's you know that's what I like to do. I'll sit and I'll knit and we'll you know we'll you we'll, know we'll, we'll watch what we're watching. So in my head. It's all right to do that. It's all right to sit and knit and watch the television. So, so, so there are times when I'm when I'm deadline knitting, where I'll have to go and find something and put the television on, and then my mind goes, 
Oh, yes, it's the evening. I can sit in it. That's that's fine. But then there's there's only certain things then that I can watch. So it can't be too interesting because then I'll keep looking at it. Can't have subtitles because then I miss half of it. It can't be anything that I'll think. Oh, I'll just look that up now. Put my knitting down. It's gonna be. You know, there's gonna be like a particular level of <laughs> of of something. So so you know, I'm, I've nearly finished all twelve seasons of The Big Bang Theory, and they've got me through a good number of deadlines. It's been it's been great because. Because there's not too much to it. It's just funny. I don't have to look at the screen all the time, but I can still follow what's going on. So I can highly recommend The Big Bang Theory for deadline knitting. <laughs> Love it. Have watched it many times and then gone on to watch Young Sheldon. Have you watched yes. Young Sheldon? I've seen, I've, seen, I've seen some of it. I haven't seen all of it. My, my husband's been binge watching that and I'll come in and I'll be like, well, where are you up to now? He looks about three years old already. i like, oh yeah, sorry. I forgot to tell you. I've been watching that. So... What does the process of designing a colourway for West Yorkshire spinners look like? I went to, I, I came up with the ideas of, of what I wanted to do. And then I had the, um, the, the, co- the colours the colors set out and, um, in, in what I wanted. Um, I actually used the, um, the little strips of colours that you, you know, that you get from paint samples where you can choose all, all the different tones of shades of things. So, so, it, um, because it would have been absolutely no point in me going to see them and saying, for example, oh, I've got an idea for season yarns. It's all in my head. Because, you know, that's, that's that's absolutely no point in me doing that at all. So I needed to. Um, so first of all, I, I when I go and see West Yorkshire Spinners and them, and I say these, so these are going to be my my seasons colours, and these are the colours that I want to use. And, and because they, uh, when we did the first collection. Then we knew that we wanted stripes, but we didn't want them to look the same as the the, the West Yorkshire Spinners. West Yorkshire spinners stripes that they already have, so we needed to create uh, winning mum stripes, and that's where the the very first one, the hidden gem one that came out, the purple one, uh, that's actually based on the amethyst tumble stone that I that I um, that I designed the colours on. So, um, so the geniuses that are in the dye house looked at it and they looked at my stone and they said, "Oh, okay, this is what we can do." So that's why my winning mum stripes are the way that they are because they mimic the bands that are on the amethyst tumble stone and we liked them so much that we thought that we would keep them like that where the colors blend into each other as opposed to being very definite stripes which is what west yorkshire spinners stripes are uh, and then we've just used that that same stripe method for all of the colors so when i came to to do the uh, the seasons colors for example then um i went to see them with with the um a uh, set of five colours, because that's how that's how many stripes there, there are, um, different stripes there are. So I had all five colours for each of the seasons, and then we we matched them to uh, what they had in. They they have um, a, a recipe box. Um, it's absolutely stunning. It uh, and, well well. I'm saying that that's what they had. That's what they had when they when we did the first collection, and they might have a different different system now. I'm not allowed in the dye house. I'm not allowed to see anything. It's everything is everything is top secret. They um, quite. I, I think that the the actual yarn manufacturing industry is is so top secret that I, I, I say that everything with them works on a needs to know basis, and then they decide exactly what I need to know. And quite often, it's not very much. So. Um, so I know that. So I, I gave them gave them my sheet, and um, uh, the, the the first time round, I got to see the box with 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 the recipes and all, and basically little, little bits of yarn wrapped round card with with them um, their notes on the, on the back that meant nothing to me, but obviously meant something to them. A bit a bit like we were talking about about a knitting pattern before, you know, it means nothing to somebody who doesn't understand it. Um, so, so then it was a case of so just pick out the colours and see how they fit and see how they go and then we put them together and then um, and then uh, they created a, a sample samples for me that I could look at to see whether whether the colours worked or not and then and so that was how it was with the, with the first one and then with the seasons collection we actually put that together through lockdown so there was an awful lot of stuff that happened through photographs and sending things through the post. Um, and I didn't, I didn't get to go up there and, and pick the colours out or put put them together or anywhere. But actually, amazingly, from from what I'd been able to give them with um, uh, with with the little the little card shades, and we'd we'd obviously managed to work it um, 
around around the COVID lockdowns. I must have started that beforehand, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to to go and get this get the shade card. So I've, I've forgotten now exactly how it worked because it because it's quite a while ago. So so that then they were able to take what I'd done and then they matched it with the shades that they knew that they had, and then they sent the samples back to me. And I could say, oh well, actually, so so with uh, with Seascape, for example, we ended up with three three samples of, of, of knitted fabric, and I ended up taking them apart so that I could take the colours from one and put them with the other, and and so that's how we ended up with Seascape in in, in the end. Um, Wildflower was was perfect just as it came. Hidden Hidden Gem was also perfect just as it came. We just needed to to tweak the stripes, and and I knew when it was right because I opened it and I'd look at it. Oh, when I burst into tears <laughs> because it's it's such an emotional thing. You don't realise it's such an emotional thing seeing seeing your colours and seeing them seeing that that they're, they're, that they're just right. And um, and so that's yeah. what we and, and so that's what we did. There was a lot of, of backwards and forwards. Um, I didn't I didn't always I didn't need to be there because they knew what they were doing. They would post stuff for me, and I could look at it and. And then, you know, and so and so for some some of them we had um, three or four samples and I, and I and I could look at them and say well this one's right or that one that one's right and then um, and then once we were happy with them all then they just went off and they, they went into the mill and and then they then they came out in balls of yarn with with winning mum on the side of the label which is proper, proper exciting that was uh, that was oh, really yeah. really exciting it Do was amazing. Do you get to name them as well? Do you get to um, name the colours? Yes, yes, those those colours, those colours which are the Winnick Mum ones. Then, then yes, I did. We some of them we had a bit of a tweak. So Hidden Gem, I originally called it Amethyst, but they've already got an Amethyst in their range. So we needed to we needed to to rename it. And uh, and I was going to call Seascape Sea Glass, but I think they had a think they had one of those. So we called it. So I thought, well, actually, Seascape Seascape's nicer. Seascape works works much better. I think I think for that because because um, it's it becomes anybody's seascape then doesn't it it becomes anybody's holiday where they're looking out across the sea and you know they're standing on the sand or they're you know they're sitting in a boat and so so actually i think that the names that they have now are perfect i think they're just they're just right they're just right and it was very much a collaborative effort i felt i felt very involved all of the way through and west yorkshire spinners are just a lovely company to work with they they, they really oh, are the ace definitely my favorite yarn company so we are loving the new Christmas colourway, the Nutcracker. I've got mine. Mm. Hey! <laughs> my first vanilla sock that I've ever knitted for myself. Fantastic. Um, and I've got the other one on the needles. <laughs> Jane's got some. Yeah, brilliant. Did you have anything? Ever... And it's sparkly as well. That's what I, I like that it's... A, oh, no, tangles. Yes, yeah, like it's... It's all sparkly. It's nice it's that they do, they, do, they do sparkly yarns at Christmas. I, I like that. Not everybody yeah, does, but then you can't please that. everybody, can you? It, you know, it's so. I know, but it's Christmas; you have to have sparkle, don't you? You do. Do you have any input on those colours then? No, no, no. That's all. That's all. All, all West Yorkshire. All West Yorkshire spinners. They, um, the only ones that I've that I've had input in are the ones that are the, the winning mum ones. Um, so they'll right. they. Um, uh, in fact, you know, even even when I'm I'm doing I'm doing a design for them, then quite often they'll ask me if I do the design before I even see the yarn, and that's ah, because that, that's our so, next question. Because I was going to say you've done the Alexander socks to go with the Nutcracker, which yes. is a gorgeous pattern. But what what is the design process look for you look like for you when you're doing like dealing with like a busy sock yarn like that? Because that mm. is a busy yarn. It is a busy. So, but if yarn. you're doing it before they even give you the yarn, that's like. <laughs> well, it's it's difficult to what what happens is that they so with with Alexander for example, then I I knew that it was going to be based on the Nutcracker, and I I knew also that they they, they sent me some photos of 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 what their inspiration was for the yarn. So I so there was the Nutcracker doll. Um, there were a, a couple of other things on there I can't quite remember, but they they. They were particularly um, keen that it that it should um, because it's called Nutcracker. Then immediately for me because I because I like the story. Then I'm then I'm thinking oh well there's the Nutcracker doll and the Nutcracker yarn and what can I build that's that's round that's round that. So that's when I'm when I'm I looked at the doll um, and the first thing that I think the first thing that you the first thing that I noticed about them is 
is the the, the ornate boot laces. That's always the, you know when I was I can remember being little and, and you know the way that it goes it goes like that. You know, when I remember being bored at school, I used to draw an awful lot of these things going down the side the side of the page. So so immediately that was like a, a familiar shape and and, and I liked it. I was like. Hmm wonder if you can do anything with that in yarn and 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 then I start going off off down there and that and you know down that tangent and, and and I'll I'll have a look in in stitch dictionaries and that and see if I can adapt something or develop something and then and then once you start thinking down down that way as well all right well it's uh the nutcracker is a is a soldier doll so w- what else can I bring in from that theme to, to there so so down the back of the sock there are um military style braids and then there are um i can't remember what else was down the back the so- socks have gone the socks are the socks are have, have gone back to west yorkshire spinners so there but um but it was come on i've got a copy of the pattern um but yes the the idea that the, that was down there with the with, with the back was was putting in sort of ornamental braid because i was thinking that we'd had We'd, we'd, we'd had the queen's funeral in in the year and we'd but we'd all then we'd also had the coronation and i l- absolutely loved seeing i, I, I love the ceremony particularly that the horses and you know and, and the, when, when they're riding with the horses and, and all the military um uh, ceremonial uniforms that they have on i think you know i think whatever your view of of the royal family and whether we should have them or not we do do a very good parade here in in, in the uk and i absolutely i absolutely love that and i also absolutely loved that one of the riders knitted her own socks and she had those on in her boots and so i was so and, and i i'm not i'm not quite sure where whereabouts she she was where she was one of the outriders and i but you think so you're on that beautiful white horse and you've got your hand knit socks under your shiny boots and that's that's pretty amazing so so all of that was in was in my mind when i was doing it and and i can i can take the ideas and i can swatch them but they don't really come together until I've got the yarn in my hand. So, so that the sort of like I can do sort of a bit of thinking ahead of time, but but then I need to have the yarn because because what you think might work um, on I don't I don't know on, on a on a plain yarn or or I could use like you know I could have used one of their different yarns until you've got that specific yarn you you don't know what you don't know whether it works at all. So. So then the design process becomes well. I've got these ideas, so let's see how let's see how they go. So there's a lot of sweat, lot lot of swatching, a uh, lot of muttering, a um, fair bit of TV watching, and uh, and, <laughs> and then I'll, and then I'll. But then once I've got it, and, and then it then it's easy then because all I've got to do is, is, is knit it. Um, and so so that that's the, that's the process then. So I'll I'll knit one and then I'll write my pattern. And then I'll, I'll put it away for a week and then I'll go back and I'll read my own pattern to make sure that it makes sense, um, hopefully. Uh, and, that, and then, and then I'm, I'm good to go then. Brilliant. I did mention earlier that uh, we have a giveaway and West Shortshire Spinners have kindly sent us two prizes, the ball of yarn and the fabulous Ooh, Alexander pattern. Lovely. To give away to be entered into the draw if you leave a comment below and let us know which is your favorite shade of west yorkshire spinners signature four ply and hit the subscribe button um we will have a prize draw and two lucky winners will be receiving their goodies including the sparkly yarn and the alexander pattern so Amazing. get busy commenting and hitting the subscribe button and win yourself some goodies so we're going to talk about needles now. Great. It's an important subject. Very. It so is. metal or wood? Metal. Always metal. I, li- I like the weight of them in my hand. Um, I have got a short circular. Where I've got it's a, one of the Knit Pro Symphony ones with the coloured wood. And that's the one that I tend to take on holiday. In, in, so that if it gets taken off me at the airport... I've not lost my very best needle, but I can I can still use it. But I'm I'm definitely definitely a metal needle person. So are me and Jane. We just snap the wooden ones all the time, don't we, Jane? Yeah, <laughs> too rough. Yeah. So again, it goes to the, <laughs> the the tension and rushing through things and just yeah yeah absolutely yeah. So it has to be the metal needles. I like I like the glide of the metal needle. Yeah, me too. Mm. Me too. And. Magic loop or DPNs? I'm actually a short circular person. 
So, so I would use oh. deep ends or magic loop oh, yeah. for the heels of the toes. Um, and, it, and it's interchangeable. I, 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 sometimes I use DPN, sometimes I use magic loop. It depends on, on what's, what, what's closest to hand. But the rest of my sock is always on a short circular. And I use a 30 centimeter, 12 inch short circular, which, which, uh, lots of lots lots of people will say, oh, you definitely need the nine inch one, but that makes my hands cramp up. So I don't use that one. I can use the thirty centimeter or the twenty five centimeter, and that's as that's as small as it gets for me. But definitely always a short circular. Oh. I had exactly the same problem trying to use the the small circular needles. Just caused so much cramp and hand pain that it, it brought me no joy mm. whatsoever. So I was straight back to wrestling that hedgehog with the DPNs, like a nice long DPN, and uh, and off I go, a happy and, bunny. And it doesn't matter, does it? There are so many. There are so many needles that you could that you can use as long as you find one that works for you. It absolutely doesn't matter. There, you know, there's no knitting needle police anywhere. Is there? You know, nobody's going to come around saying, "Oh, you shouldn't," but because it's it's always what's best for you. I always say, if you're struggling with your sock knitting, try a different needle yeah. because it does take yeah, a while to find the needle that works for you, whether it be wood or metal, <coughs> wood or metal. Um, yeah, circulars, yeah. DPNs, like you say, we're we're all so different. When it comes to being all so different, cuff down or toe up socks. So this is a big cuff point down. of contention on our podcast. Good girl. That's oh. what I have to say. C- cuff, cuff down. <laughs> cuff down. I tried. I tried making toe. I think I've made two pairs of toe up socks, and I just just doesn't do it for me. I, I don't. It, I don't. I can't get. I can't get the the cuff cast off. Isn't tight enough. I just don't like it. So, so you know, again, we've got we've got choice, haven't we? And 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 what what uh, what I like about about some of the patterns that I've written is that is that people just turn them round. So if they if they don't want to knit them cuffed down, then they just turn the pattern around and knit them toe up. And I think that's great because I'd rather that they knitted them and enjoyed knitting the pattern than me have to say, oh, you can only knit that cuff down. That's never going to work. And <laughs> some patterns you have to you have to knit one way or the other, don't you? But but you know, I think it, that you know, if you can use them a, a different way and, and you like it, then I think that's what's important. Yeah, definitely. So I've seen on the uh, Facebook group that you've got something new coming out, which I am really excited about. The uh, the Super Socks Notebook. Yes. What can you tell us about yes, it? Yes, that's. I can, well, I can show it to you. I don't know if it's going to. Will it come out backwards? Am I? <laughs> I'm not sure if that comes out backwards. No, it should be okay, so, I think. So it's it's actually called Project Super Socks. Um, well, I'll show you backwards. It says Pro- Project Super Socks. So it's part of the of the series that, that are my Super Socks series that I've written already. So my my um, sock along sock tutorials are either free online or for those who don't or can't be online all the time. Then it's in a paperback version. And so that's that's the first super socks, and then there's more super socks, which is 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 next next step techniques. So that helps people to do cables, lace, intarsia, uh, color work, um, and there are more wordy patterns. I am I am a wordy person. It's, it's 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 just how it is, and my patterns are quite wordy. And and I thought when I first wrote su- uh, super socks and the basic four ply pattern and the and the sock along tutorials that people would be able to go from that. To any other pattern that was that was out there, and some people can, and some people can't. So more super socks is is uh, less wordy than the than the sock along tutorials, um, but it's still more wordy than a lot of patterns that you'll find. So that it can give help somebody get the confidence to try that and then and then move on. So so project super socks is. Um, um, this is this is my, my my proof copy, which is why I've got a nice stripe here. But it's called it's called a master plan, um, and the idea the idea is that you can write your name in it because I used to really like uh, books like that when I was little. But also that thing again where we uh, where we celebrate the skills that we have. You know, it's lots of people that I talk to say that that their knitting isn't valued by people who can't knit, and and it should be. So to have a book that is your master plan. Well, that already elevates you into into a you know a different place from somebody who or, you know just does a bit of knitting. Um, so what what's in here is um, uh, it's it's space to, uh, to to write notes for fifty pairs of socks, 
and they don't have to be Winnet Mum socks. They can be any socks. So I've got, and I've got, I've got little tick boxes for toe up and cuff down, uh, and types of heel. Um, and then there's the space for additional notes. Um, and the the idea is that you put in there everything that you would need to remember to to knit a, another pair of socks. So if you're somebody who knits socks for family or for friends, and you need to adjust the pattern slightly, then you can write it down. And it's and it's here. Uh, and because it's A5 size, um, and it's not it's not massive. It's you know it's, it's not a really big book, but because it's A5 size, it fits quite nicely in a, in a project bag. So all of the information, if you're, you know, if you've got lots of family or, or even if you just want to tweak the patterns for yourself a little bit, and, and as you, you know, you, you'll know this. The best thing about hand knits is that you don't have to necessarily follow the pattern as, as, it, as it's written. So, so particularly with plain socks, if you're somebody who has swollen ankles or swollen calves, but your foot is smaller or, or you're knitting for someone who's got a broken foot and you need to expand something, then, then you, you can just do that. And you can write the notes here so that if you then needed to go back and, and, and knit a, another pair for that person, you're not going, oh, where are my post-it notes? Where did I write that? Which little notebook? Because, because I have this information written down, but I have it written ac across a few books because I have a design one. I have one one where I've knitted. For, I, I don't knit many socks for other for other people these days, but but you know I still have to I still have to make notes because I do it so infrequently. If I don't do that, then I just don't remember. So so that's that's what what is half of the book, and then the rest of it after the 50 pairs of socks is, is uh, I've, put the, I've put the index halfway through because, because there's a contents page at the beginning. All the inf important information is at the front. So you've got a contents page where you can write down where each of these socks are. So if you knew that you needed to go back and, you know, socks for mom, then it's right at the front. You're not flicking all the way to the back of the book to try and find it. So you would, so, so you, you'd know which sock it was and then you'd go and find, find mom's details. Um, but at the back, I've got my sock stitch calculation, which is part of the sock along tutorials. And then I've got the basic four ply socks pattern. And I've got the uh, the basic eight ply double knit socks pattern, which tend to be the ones that, that people people knit more often. Oh, and I've got and uh, I've also got um, uh, a quick uh, reminder of how to do the Kitchener stitch. So everything that you are probably going to need is in this one book, which you can then shove in your project bag. It's all here. It's your blueprints. And if you go anywhere or you need to put it to be anywhere or or even, and, and I'm thinking about this because I've recently <laughs> updated updated my will, is that if you wanted to pass it on to somebody in the future so that, if you know, if you, one day you're the grandma who then teaches something, then it's here, isn't it? You've got... You've got something that you can, you can, and it becomes a legacy thing. And I think that's, I think that's lovely. You know, the number of people that have said, oh, if my grandma could have just shown me or if my auntie could have just shown me. Well, if you've got all of this written down and you then want to become the family, the family knitter, then it, then it's there, isn't it? Or, or it's something that you have for, from that person written, written in their writing. So, so not to be particularly maudlin about it, but, but, um, <laughs> Oh, I love but that. I think, you know, I think it's, been, it's you know, it's kind of in my head because I've been updating my will because uh, you know everybody should should uh, should have a will. Everybody should update it from from time to time. So, so um, so yes, that that's what that's what that is. It's with the printers at the moment, and it's going to be out um, early December. I'm hoping first week in December I'll, I'll have the I'll have a, a very definite mm -hmm. date very very soon. So when when I've got copies, if if you would like some for another giveaway then I'll, I'll send you a couple of copies and you can give those away as well if you'd like to um, thank you so then, much then you've, then you've, you're very welcome then you've, you've got those oh, as well yeah oh that's going on my Christmas list that <laughs> so even even more reasons to uh, pop that comment below telling us what your yes. favourite shades of West Yorkshire Spinner's signature four ply are and hit that subscribe button because um, we now have copy of christine's uh super socks project book i'm sorry what's it yes. called project project book? project super socks yes project project super the, master super plan. Socks. the master plan i like this we should <sighs> all be in like a swivel chair with a large cat shouldn't we so we have our five quick fire questions yes for you. Go on, then. are you ready i'm only going to answer them if i know the answers you know <laughs> They're quite easy. 
Okay, so tea or coffee? Tea. Cats or dogs? No, both. We've got both. They'll both be they'll, either one will be offended if I have to pick one. <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, you're not answering that one. <laughs> <laughs> both. I'm having both. <laughs> <laughs> knit or crochet? Oh, knit. <laughs> knit. I can crochet, but it's always knitting for me. Crisps or chocolate? Chocolate. <laughs> and chocolate. the last one is knee high or shorties. Oh. oh all, my so- <laughs> all my socks are the no- all my socks are the normal mid normal like mid-calf. my standard mid calf left. <laughs> all right, I would probably go for. Oh, I don't like that question. I was going to say I'd probably go for knee high because because then when they, when they just fall down, then they're slouchy socks and then I'm not getting a draft. But they take so much longer to knit. So then, because I want to knit them faster, I'd probably want shorties. I said I wasn't going to answer these questions if I didn't like them. <laughs> oh. I, kind of, I kind of fudged that one. <laughs> You go with the knee high socks and then you can pop your, your roller boots on and, and, and just dash around getting everything done, really. Yeah. Sure. That's yeah, how it that, works. That's, isn't it? That's, tr- that's, that's true. Knee high socks are more flexible, aren't they? There's just so much more knitting because it's like two pairs of socks in one, isn't it? So, um, yeah. So, you know, then, then it becomes yeah. that knitting deadline thing, doesn't it? That's, you know, when it's like, <laughs> I've got to finish these yes. knee high socks. I've literally just been there. <laughs> Yeah, with a knee high yeah. sock, and, and a fair absol- knee high sock. Oh, oh my life! You need a prize for that. Fair round knee highs. Goodness me! I know. <laughs> I should. I need a medal. <laughs> you do. I, I'm sure you're going to be the honours list in the new year for your services <laughs> to knee high fair round socks. <laughs> well, you should be. You should be. Um, oh yes, it was a slog. <laughs> but they were worth it. The pretty. They are the beautiful, beautiful <laughs> socks. I think. I think when oh. they're worth it, then that's fine, isn't it? It's just that when you're working through them, sometimes then you you wonder why on earth you started. But when you've finished, and they're amazing, then that's great, isn't it? Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Christine. Spending time with you has been has been a lot of fun, and I've learned a lot about the the sock yarn dyeing process and how all those beautiful colours of have come together um hope you've had a had a giggle with us today it's been such good fun thank you for asking me it's been it's been great it's been really good thank you so just a little reminder to um if you enjoyed today's episode that is and how could you not hit the subscribe button and and give us a like and enter into our prize draw until next time goodbye Bye. 